And good morning. It's your friendly neighborhood to run. And how's everyone doing today? All right. So this is a first. Um, one of my viewers, Explorator One. I uh, hope I got that right. Uh, gifted me the Bonham Mark IV. And I uh, gave it a first run last night, even uploaded a video, but I didn't uh, make it public. It was just too embarrassing because I flat pancaked. Um, well, I didn't literally pancake into the ground, but I'm still learning how to use it. Um, so first off, thank you, Explorator 1, and we're going to take a look at this and see if I can figure out how to play it better. Um, it works fairly well as a level bomber. He mentioned that he was using it as an attack bomber. And I tried that once. Uh, it's in it, uh, and it didn't work out very well. So let's talk a little bit about the aircraft. You'll notice that you have a single Browning 303 right here. And then you have a Lewis and a uh, machine gun, which is a drum-fed World War I rifle caliber uh, 303 machine gun in the rear. Um, okay, so even in World War I days, this would be considered a fairly light armament. Um, which means essentially for all intents and purposes, it's got, it is, doesn't carry a gun armament. Uh, that much... I verified last night. Okay. The uh, next thing about the aircraft. Let's go a little bit back into the design history. This was actually a, the winner to a, a prize offered in the mid-30s um, by a, a member of the nobility in Great Britain and put up a, a prize money and this aircraft was manufacturer which was oh lord almighty i just woke up not all that long ago let's go take a look at this just a minute because i have got to refresh my memory and i want to do this right There we go. The Bristol Blenheim. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Lord Rothamere offered, uh, an air, he wanted to have the world's fastest airliner. And whoever could build it, he offered prize money. And sure enough, they won. Uh, and for a short time, it was. And... That perked the military's interest, and they wanted a bomber, and voila, here you go. Uh, they came out with a Mark One, a Mark uh, Two, which failed, um, and then a Mark Three, and this is the Mark Four. Now, one of the things about the aircraft is that it could carry one ton of bombs internally, uh, even by World War II standards, it was early World War II standards, it was an aircraft that was showing its age. And that tells you not that the designers were bad, but just how rapidly um, the design of aircraft was evolving. And part of it was that. Um, Competing bombers were already on the drawing boards, are already in the early stages of being uh, in production, and were better. And part of the problem here is this, the, the engines, the engine outputs. These things never got over a thousand horsepower. Um, and given the size, and given the time, of course, that's, that's one thing. Um... But by this point, uh, the U.S. is already producing uh, 2,000 horsepower engines, 1,200 horsepower engines. These things weren't quite 1,000 uh, at their best. 
And such was the need for aircraft that the uh, RAF needed everyone they could get anyway. They fought through the Battle of France. Uh, they were used as night fighters. They were used for by like, coastal command. Um, you don't need a world beater in every uh, role. And as patrol fighters want heavy, they were still quite useful. Uh, but during the during the Battle of France, they were um, used, and they had a kind of tragic history. They had many occasions where they were being used um, and as far as I can tell, the best thing they they did was prove the gallantry of the r a f uh, they had cases where 27 out of 40 aircraft were shot down uh, trying to attack choke points. Uh, they could not defend themselves against uh, modern fighters very well. Uh, and then they were used during the Battle of Britain to attack uh, Luftwaffe air bases. They would time the attack, so by the time the aircraft got home, nestled in, here came the bombers. And they had some successes, but for the most part, it cost a lot of pilots their lives. Um, so for me, it's an interesting aircraft historically. Making it work is so far being proven problematic. I'm going to try to run this on a couple of higher-end runs. Let's talk about the equipment we have on there right now. Uh, we've got improved covering, reinforced airframe, and turret stabilization. Um, let's go here to altitude performance. It can fly fairly high, and I'm going to use that. And then maneuverability, we're going to... Uh, uh, is Well, it's a medium bomber, and it turns like one. No shame there. Airspeed. Um, in your typical four match, any fighter, decent fighter, is going to outrun it pretty well, which was the case historically as well. So I suspect we're going to have to keep it up high. Uh, I will make at least one attack run at, uh, at a target late in the game, I think. Um, bombs. It carries a ton of bombs internally. Uh, it doesn't really slow down the aircraft. But let's get just take a look for uh, yeah yeah uh, because the bombs are, inter are internal removing the bombs doesn't uh, speed the aircraft up and I don't know why you'd remove the bombs because it wouldn't have a reason to be in the game um, all right let's move on beyond that survivability you have 483 points and some of that's coming from this about 20 percent uh, and then gun armament is well pathetic how pathetic okay Let's talk about this. Uh, you get 28 damage per second out of your Lewis machine guns. And 25 out of your Browning. So you're not going to be able to fight your way out of trouble. Alright? I was just... I actually did line up a fighter in my sight, hit him for a few seconds, and you could tell that I hit, hit him. Uh, you actually see him light up, but there's no real damage. So, that you know. All right. Let's take this thing to battle. And we'll see what we can do with it. Enjoying my morning coffee. Hope everybody else has had a good drink in their hand and are you being safe. And no, it's not Irish coffee either. This, making videos is hard enough without drinking. 
<laughs> okay. Well, we might do pretty good on this map. And by the way, this is a tier three. Um, a lot of your success with this aircraft is going to depend on where you're tiered in at. If you're in a tier uh, four or three match, it's going to get pretty grim. That was last night. Uh, in a tier uh, two, three match, might do pretty darn well. So this one is going to most likely be pretty favorable towards it. So we're going to fly the bomb site. Well, there's no need to do that. Let's go ahead and do a bombing run. We'll just go ahead and, and we got lots of boost. Now let's do our attack run. The Exploratory 1, this run is for you. Let's see how our opposition deals with Four bombs released. Let's see if I can... Oops. I came in too steep. Alright. And we're going to head straight back out. And you notice that we got to run away from our opposition. Alright. Let's come back around. Well, as a dive bomber, it makes a good something else. So we're now lined up properly and got the right. And we have bombs again. Wow. Okay. Come over here to a left shift. Bomb view. See how we're doing on this target here. which is why we're catching all this. Alright, we'll come back to left shift again. See what we need to help on, and we don't. Alright. We'll move on over to the next point, and we're going to come up and let's drop the bomb. And believe it or not, we actually killed a... Uh, now we're hurting pretty bad here, we're going to come up to some, uh, some altitude height. dying to anti-aircraft fire. Concealing livery may be very much an approach that uh, you may want to consider for this aircraft. Uh, reduces the effect of uh, anti-aircraft by about 30 percent.
All right, folks. If you're going to use this as an attack bomber, then you have to bring it in uh, low and keep your... Uh, you can't even... Uh, you can't dive even at like 40 degrees. This doesn't work real well. Mm, let's take a look and see where our uh, compatriots are. And there's an airfield there we can attack and this base. And I want to attack this base. So. This thing is stubborn about wanting to be absolutely level <coughs> when you're bombing. We're going to try to lay a stick of bombs around this. Alright, Explorator 1, uh, um, I, you can share your experiences with me uh, when I put this up, but right now, if I had to give any advice on it, it would be to stay high. It uh, seems to be a more effective uh, bomber that way. And given the fact that you're not in a uh, four match where most things uh, can get a uh, can get a hold of you, uh, can't get a hold of you. It just would make a lot of sense to me that I think that's how it should be run. The bomb load reload times are just spectacular on this, and so we just uh, took the base. Uh, yeah, it'd be very hard to argue this. And you notice now, though I'm taking damage from any aircraft, you know, we've got bomb loads back again. This is the way that the aircraft is meant to be used, and uh, given the right tier, it can be used obviously pretty successfully. Okay. There's a heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Return into base. Do you copy? Mm -hmm. We'll get turned ourselves around here in just a moment. Give myself a chance to get us turned around correctly. And you'll notice throughout this whole deal is that I have not really been touched by any of the fighters. I'm just, uh, the any aircraft is more the issue than anything else.
this thing turn around and adding to the conflict here. All right, so you have a fairly good outing here. Um, can I certainly understand why somebody would buy the aircraft. Most of your tier twos and very few of your tier threes can actually get up to the level where they can contest with this thing, um, provided that you're good with your bombing site. You can uh, obviously contribute to the battle. We destroyed four ground targets, did almost 9,000 points of uh, damage, and uh, actually killed a target with our rear gunner, who's, as I pointed out, it's got a fairly ineffective rear gun. But in its tier, it's not a bad aircraft. Now, when I flew it yesterday, it was a mixed tier 3-4 with a heavy emphasis on fours. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of aircraft at tier 4 that can chase this down and you know, get up to 6,500 feet. And it makes it a more difficult experience. But within its tier and within its role, this is a very effective aircraft. Um, you could play it low. I just, as a low ground attack fighter, uh, the problem here, uh, exploratory, is that I don't think it has enough uh, of a tail gunner to be able to make more than one or two passes. But you could say that about a lot of ground attack aircraft at that level. I just feel like you would get more use out of the plane on more bombing runs if you stayed high than if you stayed low. Um, and so having played this now two, uh, this will be about the fourth time, I keep coming to the same conclusion. It doesn't mean that you're wrong, by the way, um, or that you can't have fun, but every time I've come in low, the, the restricted driving angle uh, makes it difficult to, you know, just come in and drop a couple of bombs and zoom, play boom and zoom dive bomber, as it were. Uh, you really have to play it as a level bomber. And that I find that very limiting in what you can do. Um, if you use it in a plain ground attack role. So you can come in low, hit your boost, uh, zoom in, drop your bombs, and try to zoom out of the area, turn around, and repeat. But the most I've ever gotten is three runs that way. And uh, so you don't have a whole lot of... Well, again, that's predicated on we had tier four fighters, tier three fighters. They're uh, much tougher. And um, so you get a, uh, you know, well... Well, let's just take one right out of the line. The Hurricane 1 is more than capable of taking this aircraft down very quickly. Okay. Um, and I don't think much of the Hurricane 1, but, you know, 12 machine guns, I'm sorry, 8 machine guns is more than enough to uh, tear, the, tear this thing out of the sky for, with uh, fairly quickly. And the, you know, Wildcat, some of the other things that you'll run across at this level. Um, at tier, th as pure tier three, it's competitive aircraft, uh, mixed uh, two, one, it's more than competitive. So that's the read on it. Um, yes, you can use it as a low level bomber. Uh, you just, you want to get up to your maximum speed. Uh, you want to take consideration your uh, opposition. Obviously, if you're, um, you know, you're going to have to take a look at the other fighters. You're seeing things like the, uh, oh, what was the one I saw last night? The XP-44. That was a paper aircraft, but uh, the XP-43 was renowned for its time as being leaky, smelly, not very easy to fly, and very capable of high altitudes. And it will catch you, and it will kill you. Um, so you're going to have to take a look at your opposition when you play this aircraft. All right, folks, that's going to wrap this up. I am going to put this out today because this is a gift aircraft, and it. Uh, I told any of you that if you really wanted to see me fly a plane, I would do so, and I will. 
All right. Um, Exporter One, I want to thank you for the gift. Uh, I appreciate you very much. I uh, hope this uh, video goes some way to uh, uh, alleviate your craving. And if you, any of the rest of you want to see me fly a particular aircraft and it's a premium, uh, you can gift it to me. You're under no obligation to do so. Okay. Um, but it, if that's your particular bent, I'll accommodate it in the course. And thank you for it. It was very, very well. So this video is for Explorator One. Wanted to thank you again. And you all have a great day. Remember to like the video and to subscribe. We need all the subscribers we can get. Thank you very much and have a great day.